Hi everyone and welcome to Tuesday's Tips with Laurie. I'm so excited to share with you today the second half of our part one and part two um, boots, the pictured boots. They're called the boot buttons in the actual um, pattern here of Brunhilde. So much fun. So the pictured blocks are just pieces that you make. So you'll make one piece and cut it out and then you'll make the other piece and cut it out and you piece them together. And that's why we call them our picture blocks. So last week we covered up to this portion of chanelling. However, I'm gonna back up just to answer a few questions that we had out there. To start with, Shape Flex is a wonderful product and usually we'll put the Shape Flex on the back of the fabric block, um, not generally on the back of the stabilizer, but just right directly right on this fabric piece and then we use that fabric piece all as one. The Shape Flex then becomes part of that background block and then you just treat it as if it were not even really there, but it's perfect, it's great, it helps hold the shape. So especially on this, the boot part where there's a heavy satin stitching, that's, I would recommend putting the Shape Flex on the back of this block in particular because of the heavy stitch out of the satin stitch there and then it will make the leg really nice and flat. Um, the next thing I wanted to go over is we've had a few questions on SVG files. Yes, you can use the SVG file to cut out the, the original block piece of the sock, and you can use it to cut out the boot. However, the Chanel layers, um, we don't recommend that you use the SVG files, and there's a reason for that, because it has to have uh, room to tack down, and there's trimming that happens with the Chanel block. And so, yes, you can use it for the, S the SVG file for the boot and for the original sock piece, which is orange. Once you've placed that original sock piece down, and one more thing I should add, we recommend using the Heat and Bond Sewable if you wanna use that on the back of your fabric for the SVG cutting or uh, something similar to that you can do heat and bond light, something like that, but don't use a craft one, something that you won't be able to sew through because once you iron that on, you want to be able to have your needle sew through and stitch around the outside and do this, this pretty sat stitch. The next thing I wanted to go over was the Chanel. This is just a review from last week. So once the base part of the sock has been stitched out, you're gonna add your orange layers all at once and it covers the whole thing. Then you're gonna cut around each one of those basting stitches, the outside of the basting stitches, and then you'll have all orange without the black at that point. And then you take your black and you do cover the entire thing with your black fabric with all three layers facing up. And then it's going to stitch just where it needs to tack down the black layers. So if you'll see here, it's stitched right around the black and it made two stitches here for your Chanel channels. And then it's stitched here. And so once you've done, you're done stitching the black Chanel layers, you're gonna cut around those basting stitches. And so you'll have an orange and then a black and an orange, black, and so forth. Sections. Then I take my seam ripper and I've unpicked the basting stitches and you're gonna lift up after you've unpicked you're gonna unpick the basting stitches for the orange after you've unpicked the ones for the black, and then it makes it all loose. Now I would recommend that you unpick the basting stitches, even if you don't unpick all of it before you pull it out of the hoop, at least unpick these bottom ones before you do the next step, which is the, the sock that's made of this tool. You wanna make sure that you've Chanel that, and the reason would be you've got to be able to cut that loose and you won't be able to cut that loose once that placement line is done and once the sock is tacked down, you won't be able to Chanel this one row right here. So I would recommend at least unpicking the basting stitches around this bottom edge of the sock and right here and even trimming that first one. Now I didn't finish untrimming, I haven't finished trimming the rest of these because I wanted to show you how I do that but first we're gonna add the tool. So you'll take your two pieces of the five by five inch tool that it calls for, fold it in half, and then the folded edge is now gonna be along the top, and we're just gonna finger gather 
the bottom and we're going to place it right over the placement line. So you can see I left the black stitching here so you can see where the placement line is going to happen. And then you're going to place your tool across that, making sure that the edges of the tool are within the sock and yet all of them are down there so they're being caught in the stitch. Then you're going to use the Kimberbell paper tape and I love the paper tape because it holds it down and it will keep your presser foot from catching. I do recommend adjusting your presser foot just up one notch for this because it's a thicker uh, amount of fabric there and then it will do a tack down line right across that and then you can pull your tape off and it will be tacked down and it'll look just like this and it, this has already been tacked down so it'll look like that now before you do the very last stitch which is this little cut line it's a tiny little stitch it's about it's just a little square box corner or a square corner you can see on this one i did it in orange and this one i did it in black just so you can kind of see the differences of what it would look like if you use a contrasting color. Isn't that much easier to see? So that's what I would recommend using is a brighter color that you can see. Now before, as soon as it's done with that stitch, what I do is I take my tool sock and I kind of tape it out of the way this way because when this stitch is done, it's gonna automatically come right back across this tool to the center of the block. And I don't want it catching my tool. I don't want the presser foot catching my tool. So I have the tool out of the way stitch that last step and then it'll go back to the center as it's finished. Then you can pull this out of the hoop and it's just like this. So the very next thing is you're gonna be cutting your sock block to six and a half by eight and a half inches. And you're using that little corner as your guide. So what I'm gonna do is pull this over here and I'm going to use a rotating mat that cuts and I'm going to do it from your direction so you can see. I'm going to take the orange pop ruler that's my six and a half by eight and a half and I'm laying it right so you can see that this is my placement guide for my orange pop ruler. That's what I'm going to go by. I'm not going by this inside box at all. I'm going just by this little tiny placement line right there. That's, where, that's what you're cutting. And the reason for that is it'll match and it'll line up for it with your other block if you do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and rotate my knot. And I'm gonna cut here. And it will trim part of the tool off the sock, that's just fine. Isn't that sweet? I just love how slick that is. I wouldn't, I don't think I could get it as straight as I needed to. Can you see how the sock is off to the side? That's really important to do because your boot, once you've made your boot, it's gonna line up. Your sock is gonna line up right on top of the boot, right where it needs to. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Now you're welcome to unpick the basting stitch off of this as well. And then this tears right away. This tear away stabilizer will tear right off of the back. So I'm gonna set that to the side for a minute and we're gonna talk about the boot. Now I know we didn't go over the boot last week so I wanted to go over that this week. In your hoop, it's gonna stitch sideways so don't let that throw you off. It's not gonna stitch straight across because it's in a five by seven hoop. So it's gonna actually be stitching up and down. So the first thing it's gonna do is gonna stitch a placement line for your fabric. And in that placement line, it's gonna stitch, if you can see this, a little notch right here. And if you note, I took my fabric piece, my block, and I made a mark that was right down the center of my block, and I lined that mark up with that notch on my stabilizer that just stitched out then I know that my boot will have adequate amount of space around it when I go to trim it. And it will not be, like if you centered the boot here, you would not have enough fabric at the bottom of the boot when you go to trim to make it look like the picture block that we're trying to make here. So once you've placed that down, I placed the fabric and I taped it in place and then it just simply did the boot 
placement line. I added my fabric and I finished my stitch out. And the very last stitch that it did, you can see it up here, is my, this is my cut line right here. You see that? So this orange uh, stitch right here is my placement line for cutting. Now the boot, you're gonna cut at six and a half by six and a half, so it's a square piece. And I line up my orange pop ruler once again with that cut line. Can you see the cut line right in there? And then I'm going to trim this away. And you're welcome to nest your rulers and add a second ruler on the outside of this if you'd like to, that would be perfectly great. And I'm going to cut all three sides of this. Four sides, I think I said three sides. The remaining three sides. And then once I've cut all three of those sides, once again, you can unpick the basting stitches from away. And then you can tear the back apart and then this block will line up exactly. Your, your boot's gonna line up just right. And then what I would do is I would go to the sewing machine. You're gonna place it face down and do a quarter inch seam in the sewing machine. And once you've done that quarter inch seam and you fold this down, voila, you've got this cute boot and the sock fits right down inside of the boot with no problem. So that is the, pit, the way that you would go about that. It can be a little bit tricky, but if you follow the step-by-step -step process, hopefully it'll work just as smooth for you. And I hope that you enjoy and have so much fun making Broomhilda. Now I wanted to cover one more thing before we're done, and I was gonna show you these two fun tools. I may have shown them once before, a while ago, but this is a slash cutter from Clover, and then there's a chanelling brush. So this is so sweet. So when you're making your Chanel, cuts, you just slide this in under the bottom layer. Look how easy that is. Isn't that awesome? And you can do that. You are, uh, you can take a pair of scissors if you'd like and also cut that, but this just goes through so fast. I really love this tool. And then it it's good because it does not catch your very bottom layer. So I'm gonna show you right here. You can see that orange sock layer I did not cut through that. You only cut through the top three layers. And here again, you're gonna see the orange underneath the black because that was the base layer. And once you've cut your Chanel, you can, um, you can use a nail file. You can use one of these brushes. You could use a really firm toothbrush if you wanted. And you can Chanel. And I love that, how quick that is. And here's my other trick. I, I'm sure most of you already would think of doing this, but just to clean up your Chanel is so quick and easy, rather than trying to brush away all those little tiny little hairs or threads. So that's it for today, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please ask us any questions that you may have, and we're happy to answer those. And hello everyone from all those other states. I love hearing where you're from in the country. It's so much fun. So. Enjoy your, the rest of your week and enjoy making Broomhilda and we'll see you next week.